So we're really excited about this new paper that's coming out. We've developed new anti-inflammatory molecules that could potentially be used to target disease in the future. The immune system is our body's defense system against infection or bacteria. But sometimes the immune system goes wrong. And in diseases like Alzheimer's, in stroke, in atherosclerosis, in cancer, there's all evidence for our immune system being activated where it shouldn't. One of the ways the immune system is activated is with an intracellular machine called an inflammasome. Now, the inflammasome is like our body's weapons factory. It sits and instead of being inflammatory itself, it produces factors like little bombs and it churns them out of cells. We call these cytokines. What we do is we take cells from mice or from humans, we treat them with our candidate drugs, so drug X or drug Y, and then we stimulate the inflammasome. Then we test what's been secreted into the supernatant and we see how many of those inflammatory cytokines the cells have released. Now we started with a very dirty molecule. It has lots of actions in the cells blocking all sorts of different pathways. And what we found was that it actually inhibits the inflammasome. But we wanted to do two things. We wanted to make it stronger and better at inhibiting the inflammasome, inflammasome and blocking the other effect that it's having in the cell. So Sally Freeman and Alex Baldwin, two chemists, excellent chemists, took this base molecule that we started with and what they did was they pulled off a part and then we would test how good it is at inhibiting the inflammasome and whether we've blocked those other dirty parts. And so through several generations, it's a lot like evolution. We created a generation, we chose our best candidate, then we created a new generation with this part over here, this part taken off, and then we ended up with our final molecule that turned out to be very potent and very specific at inhibiting the inflammasome. And it's this drug that we're gonna take forward into animal models and then maybe into human conditions where we know inflammation is involved in causing disease. So the consequences of our research are ultimately we hope to be able to understand disease better and ways in which we can stop the damaging processes that occur during disease.